Hey guys, so today's video is going to be on alternators. And <clears throat> I'm going to start out with uh, explaining the basics and the, like, the big differences in uh, alternators. And that is the type of stator that they have. So this is a slot wound stator. And this is a hairpin a Denso hairpin stator and one of the big differences is, is see all these little pads here these are the points of which it charges and see how much bigger and less dense they are here so automatically if it's a slot wound rotor I don't even mess with it I I'm not a fan of dealing with slot wounds actually be this this one I think goes with that but anyways like this is an inefficient design to begin with so I don't even bother with it so what I do is I look into how can I get a Denso on my car in the first place and that comes down to well how can I mount it and all that so an alternator has a bolt holds the pulley front housing, uh, the rotor, stator, rear housing, rectifier plate on the back of the rotor is the brush contacts. This is a brush holder and the brushes are in here. Uh, regulator sits like that. And, yeah, that's basically how that works. This sits right on here. Of course, I'd have to push the brushes back to get it to fit. But, it sits on there like that. And, the regulator sits like so. On here. Like that. So... This regulator actually comes in a ton of different forms too. Uh, they make these for all different types of cars, Hondas, uh, Acura, Toyota, uh, Ford, GM, just tons of different cars, Dodges. <coughs> and then, uh, so this piece is actually pretty interchangeable and so are the rectifier plates. So, if you get a high amp rectifier plate with all the high amp diodes in here, that'll handle the amperage that you're trying to put out. So, normally on an aftermarket one of these from, you know, one of the name brands, you'd see a big fancy rectifier plate on here. And those are just a part number. You can get that same rectifier plate uh, from a parts catalog and it's not very expensive either like uh, the higher amp parts are not that much more expensive than the cheap you know generic parts that go on each of these base alternators so the main thing to know is there's two different sized Denso hairpins there's a large case and a small case and which your car will fit you know you'll have to do research the reason why I use these also is because there are so many different housings for these there is literally tons of different stock housings for these like this one has the mounts this way this one has them like that you know staggered off um, this one's completely different yet has bolt down and one of these style so there's a bunch of different housings and chances are there's one that will actually fit your vehicle stock if not it's usually a slight modification on one of the brackets to get one to fit um, so then comes the upgrading the rotor and stator are the two things that control how much amperage you're going to make pretty much 
the regulator just regulates it and tells it what to do. The brushes, they make contact with the rotor and that's their job. So the regulator is one thing that's highly interchangeable. We use pretty much GM regulators on just about everything. It only requires a lamp circuit to operate and then you also get a sense pin well not on this particular one but on this one you do there's three pins in there one is a sense pin uh, don't know if it says on there but it usually says LFS that's lamp field sense so this sense pin allows you to control your voltage the lamp is uh, like a dash light circuit to turn it on. It's 12 volt switched with a lamp in line. So like for testing on the bench I use you know just some clips and the light bulb and I can test them. So you can do that same thing in a vehicle too. So no matter what it has for a factory plug you can pretty much always get it to work with a GM plug which is nice. Uh, because you have the voltage adjustability and everything like that. Um, I'll get more into detail on like what you can do to modify these, but there's already videos on YouTube how to modify the stator, uh, different rotor swaps. There's tons of information online which rotors can be swapped, which stators can be modified, and... Um, up the amperage on them. Uh, like I said, if you go and look, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll also be making some videos here in the future showing you guys in depth how to do this kind of stuff. But a lot of these are very highly interchangeable, and you can get a Denso hairpin on pretty much anything, especially if you put your mind to it. I've put them on newer cars, had no problems, Kias, Hondas. Acres, all kinds of stuff. Hyundai, like weird stuff that you know that nobody makes an alternator for. Well, guess what? Everybody makes a Denso hairpin high performance alternator from like every single brand. They're not too hard to figure out, you know, like what are these guys doing to make these high performance? Well, it they're a lot of them are just switching you over to a Denso. And doing the common Denso modifications, which are very cheap to do. I picked these alternators up for like 30 bucks. Another thing is, is they make these in like 220 or 180 amp stock alternators. So you can take these right from the freaking junkyard if you know what you're looking for. Figure out a way to mount them on your vehicle. The proper regulator. And you can run multiple... 180s or 220s very very easily and very cheap cheaper than running you know a big high performance alternator from a company and they're much more reliable because they're running cooler smoother and yeah they're not getting stressed out so uh, this is basically just a breakdown that I wanted to give you guys and get you guys on the right path for searching what you can use so like I said, look at any, any of the big alternator companies and you're going to see that they're using a Denso hairpin for pretty much everything. And a lot of them use the GM plugs. So it's not too hard to figure it out from there really. But like I said, I'll go into more in depth here in the next videos and show you guys exactly how to do some of those modifications. Like the cheap stator uh, modification it's honestly it's some silver solder and uh, clippers and a little bit of time maybe some heat shrink and it's not very hard so thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos